It's time to go beyond the headlines Cause I don't put in overtime just so I can headline Okay, now it's Fox Sports, I'm live with Renee Going hard every day, sports rapping every play Different segments for your favorites Coming at you daily with positive vibes Yeah, we some game changers Basketball, football, soccer With different interviews, you never know who may pop up Listen, <laughs> only on Beyond the Headlines This is Beyond the Headlines <laughs> Only on beyond the headlines, this is beyond the headlines. <laughs> Only on beyond the headlines, this is beyond the headlines. We're Renee Washington. Welcome back to Beyond the Headlines with Renee Washington for our Super Bowl special edition episode 25. Joining us also from Miami to weigh in on all things Super Bowl 54, we've got Laura Oakman. Fox Sports NFL reporter. And Laura, welcome to the show. I'm happy to have you here. Hi, Renee. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I love the show. I love what you're doing with your voice and your platform. So thanks for having me on. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. That means so much. So you have been a part of this journey to the Super Bowl. And so starting with the behind the scenes perspective, I was asking our last guest, Melissa, to, l- to let us know what's going on in Miami. I know you are just getting started in Miami. There's a lot more to do before Sunday. But take us through what it's like to be a media credentialed member and just be behind the scenes to be a part of all the incredible things that go on around Super Bowl week. Well, what I would tell you, I was smiling as you said that, because as soon as you said there's a lot or a long time <laughs> until the game, I thought but I'm so tired already and then realized it is only Tuesday as we are doing this. And that's never a good sign when you're that tired and it's Tuesday, but that really tells you what the days and the nights are like here. It's, um, it's, it's a groundhog's day a little bit. It's, it's a a really crazy action packed week and it's awesome. It's so much fun. It's full of so much and it's changed so much since the first Super Bowl I've covered, which was probably around 1992 where the first one I covered, it really was all football. And mm-hmm. now there's football, there's entertainment, there's just so much going on. Um, and it's and it really is waking up early, going to bed late, and just hoping that you're not missing anything. Um, what I'm doing this year for the first time ever, I'm calling the game for Westwood One Radio. I've, I've covered a lot of Super Bowls. I've never been on the broadcast team. And I have an incredible group of men that I'm with. I'm with Kevin Harlan and Kurt Warner and Tony Baselli, and I'm on the sidelines. And so that changes how I cover the Super Bowl a little bit. So what we get to do is we have, um, we have a little more access because we are partners with, mm-hmm. uh, with the NFL. So the two, um, the two partners for each broadcast is the, NFL, uh, is the network, the TV network that's covering the game, and the national radio broadcast. So in this case, it's, it's two of my families. It's, it's the NFL on Fox, and it's Westwood One. So when we, when we got here um, for Monday, the first thing we did is we had meetings. We, before everybody went into the opening night, into the craziness of media day, we sat down with, uh, with both head coaches, with Andy Reid, with Kyle Shanahan, and with about 12 players between the two teams. And we get to do all of our production interviews. So we get about 10 minutes with each player at just one-on-one and being able to do our research and our homework Mm -hmm. Um, But as we go into the game, now the hard part is, the great part is that's terrific access. It's really hard to get that much time sitting down one-on-one with Jimmy Garoppolo and with Patrick Mahomes and with the coaches and with all the players we requested. The hard part is we get them on Monday and it is a long week. And so you, you, it's, you're not able to say, you know, how are you handling the craziness? You know, what's been the, the coolest thing about the week? Because they're just kind of jumping in and their eyes are really wide right now too. So that's Monday. Then we go straight to um, we had a we had a live telecast Monday night. We were on the air till about eleven o'clock p.m. and and covering the craziness of uh, the media day or media night. And then today we went and had more one-on-one interviews and um, went to both teams and um, and uh, got to watch them on the podiums. Got our own interviews. Had our show. And then that kind of dictates the week. Tomorrow I'll be at practice. Or I believe it's the Chiefs. Thursday, I'll get to go to the Niners. And um, once Thursday hits, we are done with the interviews. And then we start putting together our broadcast and our tape and, and getting ready for the game on Sunday. But it's a, it's a crazy week. So already it's, you know, it's Tuesday, but 
I, you know, my team has sat down with about, you know, 15, 20 players and coaches just trying to get ready for this game. Oh my goodness. I am so happy that you shared all that because a lot of people don't really take into all, you know, into consideration all the work that goes into something like a Super Bowl or Pro Bowl, All-Star Weekend, you know, depending on the sport, whatever their big championship and All-Star events are like, because their biggest question is, what food are we going to eat on Sunday? (laughs) Which house are we going to go to on Sunday? Whereas someone that is covering it, you are dealing with a million different things and being pulled in a million different directions. And although it's exciting to be a part of it, as you mentioned, going back, you know, over the years and watching how it's progressed and grown, it is probably one of those weeks that you get done and you're like, holy moly. Okay. I need another week just to recover from last week. <laughs> you, you do. And that's why my husband and I have a vacation plan the day after the Super oh, Bowl there you go. I love it. <laughs> is to be able to decompress. But, but here's the trick with all of that. I sat down with the, with the 49ers receiver, Emmanuel Sanders, Sanders yesterday and Emmanuel has been to two Super Bowls before this one. He won one and he lost one. And so this is his third and I was talking to him about kind of what's the what's the one lesson you would try to instill in all of these brains, you know, for all these for all these players who've never been here. And he was talking about how it goes so fast and all of a sudden it's just the game ends and either you win it or you lose it. But this whole magical week is sort of a blur. And and as we we're having this conversation, he's like, I'm actually really glad we're talking about this. It's reminding me I need to take my phone out more and take pictures. I need Ooh. to be documenting this. I haven't been doing this yet. So a reminder that it's his third and still having to re- remind himself, be present. And, and I'm doing the same thing. I think that the, it doesn't matter if, if, what side of the world you're on, if you're coaching it, if you're playing it, or if you're covering the game. It is a crazy week, and I would never complain about it, but it is. It's a, it's a hard week, and it's an exhausting week. Um, and at the same time, you want to make sure that you're present and that you're enjoying it because it's an incredible week. It's an awesome week. And, you know, I've been doing this almost 30 years, and this is my first ever Super Bowl, so I certainly don't want to miss out on it. I, I want to mm-hmm. be here physically, emotionally, and mentally, and, and I think everybody has to remind themselves a bit to do that, which, uh, which is life, right? You know, that's oh, yeah. where your feet are. We all say it, but it's, sometimes it's harder to do, and, and this is a magical week that you really try to take in. Yeah. Wow. That is, that's a great point just to be present. I feel like you get so caught up in how tired you are or being hungry or being whatever, whatever you're feeling in that (laughs) moment that you forget, you know, you want to have something that you can document this moment five, 10, 15 years from now to show, you know, that you were a part of because there's no guarantee you'll be back next year, you know? So looking at, starting with the Chiefs, since you were at the AFC championship game, you were in Kansas city, you know, I know that something I've been hearing a lot is their, their key phrase of never die and how they just embody that never give up mentality every time they step on the field. And we've seen that in a lot of their results. They have been faced with a lot of adversity. Of course, who can forget the fact that they were down by 20 and ended up winning by more than 20 to make history. But t- take us through what you've seen behind the scenes with the Chiefs and to lead up to this point as we prepare for the Super Bowl. I've seen exactly what they say. It's it, it, the privilege of being on the sidelines is, you know, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching the game that's going on. I'm listening to the game in my ear, whichever, you know, whoever my partners are, whoever the announcers are mm-hmm. calling it, I have to listen to them. And then, so that's two games I'm paying attention to. And my third game is the sideline. And that's the privilege of the job is, you know, that you're down there watching how guys react to things, re- reacting to uh, a 24 point hole or a 20 point hole or, or watching how a team reacts to success. And you look for all those things. And what I can tell you is it was really cool to be on that sideline and watch them not flinch. Now one, it helped because they were in a 24 point hole the week before. So they had already mm-hmm. done it, but to be able to watch the way that they communicated and, and some sidelines, nobody talked. And, and I, that's always, you know, I love to watch how guys communicate. Sometimes, you know, nobody talks. Sometimes they just talk by position group. This team was very different. It was constant communication and it was amongst the group. So it wasn't just Patrick talking to the receivers. It was Patrick talking to the running backs and the receivers and his offensive linemen, but also him and Tyron Matthew, every time that they walked across the sideline together, when they were, you know, passing each other on the sideline, they locked eyes and would say the same thing to each other, lead 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 there is constant communication between the offense and the defense coaches to players players to players and 
that's what I watched. I watched them being focused. I watched them never panic. I never watched anybody throw a helmet. I never watched anybody yelling. It was just, you know, we, we've done this. We've got this. It was, it was really cool. And I talked to uh, three players pregame who all told me the same thing. Actually, two coaches, one player. They all told me the same thing, which was we're a little worried. We came out a little tight before the Houston game, and it showed. And I'm really nervous, you know, how are we going to come out? We don't want to come out tight. Well, they did come out tight, and the same thing happened. And so it was it was interesting watching them to kind of from that, you know, starting tight to all of a sudden loosening up and going, we know who we are. We've got this lead, lead, lead. And that's what they did. So it was it was a great vantage point. And I can't tell you enough, Renee, like I, I learned so much about leading and I learned so much about communicating every time I'm on the sideline. And this is a team that really knows how to do it. Wow, that is that's chilling to see how they just continue to, to will themselves back into the game. And then, and of course, to win and to see how they've done that in every type of challenge, whether it's being down in a hole or an injury, or whatever it may be, just to continue to have that that belief in themselves that they can attack anything thrown their way. I mean, is, is that really the backbone of this Chiefs team? I know everyone, we always talk about Patrick Mahomes, and he is a very special player, don't get me wrong. You know, you talk yep. about coaches making the right call, Andy Reid, you know, the, making the right decisions. But what is the true backbone of the Chiefs that makes them so successful that they have reached this point and been able to, so far, overcome everything thrown their way? Probably belief, you know, belief in each other and belief in Andy Reid and belief in the coaching staff and belief in what they're doing um, and belief in we can get ourselves out of whatever situation we're in. And and they came really close last year, you know, and, and, and you always need that year. You need that game. You need that feeling in, in order to get to this place. And Andy Reid would, I'm sure, say he had too many of those, but this is a team that came really close last year and uh, and knew that they that they had something special, but also knew that they that they were still growing, you know, that they had a new defensive coordinator, that the defense was still catching up to the offense. And mm-hmm. and I think now this Chiefs team isn't just about, you know, this this MVP quarterback and about this, you know, very fast offense. It's a defense that's also um, carried, had to carry the load a few times this year. And I think it's a belief in each other. It's a belief in the team. And, and again, not just the offense will get us out, but maybe it'll be the defense that does this time. And I, I, think, uh, I think that's probably what I would say their backbone is, just from, just from listening to them the last couple of weeks of what they've really said. The word believe or belief comes up every conversation. Hmm. Wow, that is, that's very special. And that is something that, as you mentioned, it allows you to have that confidence knowing that it, you don't just need to rely on one person or, or one line. It could be the O-line, it could be the D-line, it could be the special teams, it could be anyone at any given moment can step up because they have that confidence in each other. And that's something looking at the Chiefs to see how they've progressed going back to when Andy Reid first started to now, you know, you see that each season they have gotten closer. But then there's the 49ers, who we also have been hearing a lot about their camaraderie and, the, and their belief in each other, starting with Kyle Shanahan being more than just the head coach, but someone that's connecting with his players is Kyle, not coach Kyle Shanahan. Mm-hmm. And the, the way that the guys in the locker room have been having fun and just enjoying everything. So on the 49ers side, I know something I've been seeing a lot and talking about their, their family belief and their, 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 the depth that they have. Um, what makes them so special and, and such a threat aside from all the talent on the field and players like Richard Sherman, of course, um, yeah. coming into this game to be a team that can win the Super Bowl? Yeah, they're on a different level with their confidence. And I've had um, the, last three, the last three seasons since Kyle's been there, I haven't, um, I haven't covered a team more than the Niners. You know, sometimes it's certain years with, uh, with the NFL on Fox, we don't know who we're, you know, we get our games every few weeks and we don't know uh, who we're covering and we're all over the country. But for whatever reason with the schedule, we've had them a bunch. So I had them about three or four times in that 0-9 stretch and actually had them on the 10th game, you know, the, the, the finally the first win. And, and I just sat down today with DeForest Buckner and I said to him, I was around your team so much during that first year. 
And I just remember t- saying the same thing when you were 0 and 4, when you were 0 and 6, and when you were 0 and 8. And I would leave you guys and be like, I've never been around a more confident team, and they're losing. Right. And now we see the confidence, but I was like, what in the world did you have confidence to, did you have to be confident about back then? Like, where did that come from? Because this isn't a new thing. And he said, he, and he kind of smiled. He goes, you saw it, didn't you? I was like, I, you couldn't help but not, you know, like, but not to. But what he said was we were in so many tight games. It was a ridiculous amount that year. I, I wish I had the stat. But that 4-12 and 12 year, they lost. I mean, it was like double digits. Like they were losing games by, um, by like three points within three. It was just every game was a really close game and close losses. And so everybody looks at the record, you know, 0-9 and or 4-12, and 12, and you're like, oh, they weren't winning. But they also were tr- – they were, they were getting – they were building that backbone you're talking about. They were building the memory bank. You know, they were building that, you know, who are we? And they just needed to get over the hump. And then the second year, they started to all of a sudden start winning those close games a little bit more. And this year, they really did. You know, they know how to close out close games now because they had to really learn over two years. And so he said, he goes, that's when the confidence happened. It wasn't because we needed to win to see it. We just knew that we were getting there and to trust the process and to trust Kyle, not Coach Anahan, to trust Kyle and to trust John Lynch and what he was building. And that team, there's a different looseness. There's a different confidence. There is a different um, just bravado about being around this team. And it's funny because I, you know, I kept saying all this year, I had them, you know, six times this year and kept saying, oof, like, you know, like I, I have trouble seeing anybody match this and, and thought pretty early on that they could, you know, they could be here in Miami. And then all of a sudden I saw Kansas City and was like, ah, like they match this. Like this is oh, two yeah, teams yeah. that are really confident and are really loose right now and feel really good. And also they're enjoying it. And that's what's been so much fun for me this week is usually you get one team or both teams that it's a business trip. And these two teams know it's a business trip, but they're also enjoying it and also enjoying the journey. And so that's why I think it's been really fun. If you've noticed, there's been no bulletin board material. Nobody's taking any shots. It's been a really respectful and really fun matchup because I think um, I think both teams are really what they both said at different ways and different times is we've, we've battled so much. This is the gravy, you know, like it's so great that we're here, but, but we expect this, you know, we're building for this. So um, when I, I have such a tough time with this game because usually I'll always, you know, look at what everybody does and you look at the matchups and all that. But I, I very much go with heart, you know, with who feels right. And that's the privilege of my position. You know, we're in b- buildings on Friday. So we see how practices go. We see tightness. We see looseness. I, you know, you usually can tell on Friday who's kicking their own butt. You know, like, how are you going to get it together to kick somebody else's on Sunday? You know, we, we go into 32 buildings and you feel vibes very much. This one is such a different, interesting one to me because I've never felt the same way about two teams in terms of like, oh, something really special is going on here. Usually you kind of get, you lean towards one because of that, but this has been two really fun teams to watch, um, to find that confidence in themselves and really believe it. And that's why I'm really excited about this game and really excited to be on the sidelines for both of them. You know, you hit on so many great points and starting with the 49ers having that four and 12 season and really that being the start of where this run really began for both of these teams. You look at their history and that's that's exactly it. They were able to stick through what a lot of people, as you mentioned, would count them out and just see numbers, see records. They were they were building. So now when you bring in rookies or you have, you know, some magical uh, moments that allow you to elevate even more it only builds to what you already, that foundation that you had in those losing seasons. So now when things are yeah. going your way, if you can stick together in the tough times of a four and 12 season, or, you know, looking at Kansas city over their years, the records they've had like a two and 14 season, you know, it's, it's going to make it a lot easier with <laughs> as common sense as that may be to stick together when mm-hmm. things are going right. And there is no, it's not just one guy or, you know, from the coaching staff all the way through, as you mentioned, it really is different. It's very special. 
So I guess this next question is going to be hard for you, but I feel like I have to ask mm. it because we are talking Super Bowl. Do you have a prediction? Do you, I, do you, I mean, I'm curious to know if you have a team that you're favoring towards as of Tuesday slash Wednesday when this airs. Uh, that could change Sunday. We're not going to hold you against it. But do you have a prediction as of now? <laughs> I, you know, it's, I really don't. And it's, you know, it's always one of those I have to do, you know, do a lot of interviews this week and I keep thinking, oh, all right, I'm going to be asked about the prediction. Um, I, I really feel like for the first time in a really long time, this is going to be a really good game. This is just going to be a, a fight. And, and that's what I'm most excited about. Um, I would probably say my head says the Niners. I think when, when this offense is really clicking, I think it's a different offense that Kansas city hasn't seen this defense. Um, it, 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 they not only do they do it so well, but, you know, it's every guy on that offense can do, every skill guy can do the other guy's job. It's just, you know, Kyle Shannon talked about how he was inspired by the Golden State Warriors and wanted an offense to run like that. And, and it does, you know, it's, they do, they do the same thing often, um, but different guys do it. Uh, and then he throws in a, you know, a whole bunch of things nobody's seen. So my head, my head keeps going there, but my heart, man, my heart pulls for Andy Reid and, I can just tell you that um, that as much as we keep hearing players say and assistant coaches say we'd love to get Andy a win, and that's kind of you know at this point it's kind of you know storyline number two, or you know everybody says it, it's almost cliche. But after the interview stop and I start talking to guys as we walk out of the room or just kind of quietly one on one, they all say the same thing to me, like man, like we just want to do this for Andy so badly, and I never rule out the heart, and mm -hmm. so. Uh, you know, so that's, that's kind of where I am right now is, you know, waiting for the week to go on and, and I'm excited to go to practice Wednesday and Thursday and really be able to watch and, and see how they're, you know, see what they're doing and see, you know, how loose they are. Cause you know, that's what matters more than how they are in the interviews. But um, I'm excited to see, but right now that's, that's, that's kind of where I am head and heart and trying to figure out which one's going to win. Ironically, I'm in the same boat. I'm an Eagles fan. So mm -hmm. I'm rooting for Andy Reid too. And I think it's time <laughs> totally. for Big Red to win the Super Bowl. Um, but I'm also, as you mentioned, the excitement of this, of this game is for me, I mean, of course, 2018 was definitely exciting. So I'm, I don't think yeah, exactly. anything will ever triumph that. Um, but <laughs> I think definitely compared to last year, it's going to be a game that's completely different. We're going to, it's going to be exciting start to finish. I don't know who's going to win either. It's hard to pick. I'm leaning towards the Chiefs for big red, but I l could see either team absolutely winning. So Laura, I, I have pulled enough information out of you. I know you've got a lot to get back to in Miami as you're preparing for all the events and excitement around the Super Bowl. Where can our listeners keep up with you for your Super Bowl coverage and all that you're doing? Because you're creating some incredible content, not just around the Super Bowl, but in general with your one-on-one -on -one features and, and interviews and stories that you're doing too. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, for this week, um, if, if you, so to find out where the radio broadcast is for anybody who is driving, anybody who is out enjoying, uh, out enjoying the game anywhere, or if you just want to put the radio on while you're watching it on TV, um, it's Westwood One Radio. And you just go to the Westwood One Sports website and you put in your, I think it's Station Finder. And you put in your, uh, your area code or your zip code, and it'll tell you which station the national broadcast is on. So that's where you can find us for the game is Westwood One. Um, and everything else with, with the interviews, I, we usually, um, Westwood One Sports for Twitter and Instagram, we are releasing all these links and doing all these one-on-one -on -one interviews. So you can follow Westwood One Sports. You can please follow Laura Oakman. And uh, I'll keep retweeting them as well. And, um, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the week of just a lot of great conversation. Perfect. Laura Oakman, the woman behind so much incredible football content and coverage. Thank you so much. It's, it's been a pleasure and an honor, honestly, having you on the show this week. No, I so appreciate it, Renee. Keep doing what you're doing. And thank you so much for having me and enjoy the game.